Hello, hello. Today, I'm doing some wildlife photography, if you can't tell by the lens on my back. I've come down to the wonderful and beautiful Findhorn Valley. It's well known by wildlife photographers for one particular species, mountain hares. Now, if I'm perfectly honest, I did try to make a mountain hare vlog before, and it did not go to plan. <laughs> it was one of the worst days I could have done it because there was cloud, fog, wind, rain. It was just awful. And uh, every hare I did see, they were running away from me, which was really annoying. And uh, it was because I just couldn't see them until it was too late and they were running because I, I got too close to them and they didn't like it. But today looks to be a much better day and hopefully I can get close to one to get some images. I've been oh, I've been after some mount, a day with the mountain hares for a while now so it's good to finally get back out there. So I just got a see what I can do. But I hope you enjoy the journey and hopefully we will get some good images. Let's keep moving and get up into the area. I've made it to the first area that I'm going to look for the hares. The problem I've got is that they are very well camouflaged. They're not starting to change their, their pelage yet, their coat, to their winter white coat. So they're still brown. And the heather is a, a big mass of brown as well. So there are several forms, which are, is where the hares spend most of the day. It's, it's a scraping in the heather. But the way that they position them is so that they can see out and then they can creep back in so that predators and humans can't necessarily see them. So I am going to move slowly using my binoculars with the hopes of spotting them in a form. It's going to be difficult to film, but I'll, I'm sure I'll get something. I've, I've spotted one. It's just sitting in its form. It's a little bit... He, he knows I'm here, but... He's not, doesn't look like he's getting ready to run yet. But he's just sitting there. I, uh, as I was walking along, I just spotted his ears sticking up. He's listening to me. But I don't think he's perceiving me as a threat. Just yet. I'm just keeping an eye on him and I'm taking a couple shots. But they're uh, no good compositionally, to be honest. It's just that his eye and ears sticking up out of behind some pilbury.
now the fun begins. The, because with wildlife photography, the, the hardest part is that it's patience. So I'm just going to slowly work myself forward as best I can over time. And then when I get into a good position, I'm going to have to wait for him to do something interesting. <laughs> He's changed position, and that means that his face is visible now. And it's a very, very nice little face. And he's had a little munch on a pellet as well. And what, what I mean by that is that he's just defecated, he's just pooed a little. Um, pellet of grass and what, what hares and rabbits do is they actually eat those again, they redigest it to get as much goodness out of the grass as possible and they often do that when they just wake up as a little snack I suppose. Now you might be wondering why am I talking to the camera if I'm photographing a hare? The hares don't mind you talking, to be honest. You can actually help them perceive you not as a threat, just to perceive you as a part of the landscape or as someone passing by not interested in them. And, uh, and right now he's sort of nodding back off. So that's really good because it means he's comfortable with, with my presence here. He's still quite small in the frame, so I would like to get closer, but I'm going to just let see if he nods off a bit more and be patient with it because, you know, I might be able to get some better images if I give him some time. I keep taking images just so he can get used to the sound of the shutter as well. As I tried to move closer, the herons opened and it began to rain and snow heavily. Eventually, the hare was getting too soaked for its own liking and so retreated further into its form, using a boulder for shelter from the inclement weather. Managed to move a lot closer. But he's changed angle and he's in a position that is, means I can barely see him. He's that down really quite low. And I am freezing. Got his ears up. He can see me. I can see his eye through the heather. But he's not fully out. I, I can't see him very well and he's surrounded by boulders so if I change position anymore I won't be able to see him at all. I'm going to stay with him for quite a while and hopefully he will come out of his form in a little while. be honest, I'm quite close to him now, it's waiting time. Up, which is quite nice. 
he put his head back down after a few minutes of just sitting sort of half out, half in. He was, I think he was just curious, having a little look around. And there was a very noisy plane that just flew over. It sounded like a small plane. And uh, he was probably checking what that was. I'm going to continue waiting. I've realised whilst doing this that the hard part for this film is going to be B-roll because I can't leave the camera somewhere recording for two hours. It won't last the memory cards. But anyway, I hope you're enjoying this vlog. Oh, he's just sticking his head out. Hello. Hello. I think he, he just got a little curious when I was talking. He's just looking at me. One ear pointed at me as well. But he's still stuck down quite low and I can't really see him or get any pictures. I don't want to get any closer because it'll, it will disturb him and be I wouldn't be able to take any pictures, it'd be too close. I don't think there is another camera angle that would work. Movement. I've just gone for another pillow. That usually means that they're waking up a bit and they might come out to have a forage and to get some something new. Still sheltering under the, a boulder. He went under there during the snowy, wet rain period. Can't see him now. He might have ducked down to go to sleep. Just keep an eye on him. See, I'm in the, the dilemma now of do I stick with this hair because it, I have a hair I've managed to get quite close with the hopes that eventually he will come out and do something or do I go and try and find another one but that has a better composition and is facing me. Who knows how the hair will be. And that's the dilemma that we all face at some point in wildlife photography. Stick with the animal you have or go look for more. And I think I'll stick with the animal that I have. been a couple of hours since I last spoke to you. I'm freezing. <laughs> and uh, he hasn't popped up again at all. It's been raining quite consistently as well. But he's sort of ducked down under the boulders to get out of the rain a bit. There's not a lot of daylight left either. 
not enough time to find another hair, that's for sure. I wonder if the rain is sort of, I don't know, keeping him at bay a bit. About 20 minutes after we last, I last recorded a piece. The, the hare's little head popped up. As soon as she popped up like that, she then went back under and I lost sight of her. But after another five, ten minutes, her whole face came up. And I got some amazing pictures. then came out and ate some heather around me, around her form, and I had a cracking session of photography. I got a lot of pictures. So patience really paid off today, and I got some amazing hair images that I'm really looking forward to processing. I'm just going to put them up in uh, the various pictures that I enjoyed from this sequence, one after the other, with their settings, and I hope you enjoy the images as well, as much as I do. some of the images she almost didn't fit in the frame. I'm saying she but I'm not sure if it is a, a, a female or a male hair but I, I thought she was beautiful. I think I must have moved a bit too quickly to keep up with her and uh, that, that scared her and she ended up bolting and running up the mountain. And 
I think part of the reason is that I'm cold. I didn't bring, I'm wearing three jackets, if you can believe it, but I should have brought something with a bit more, a bit thicker. And because I'm cold, I'm very jittery. And, th and that meant my movements were a lot more erratic than normal. It's coming towards the end of the day, so I'm gonna end this video here and head home for a nice hot meal. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed the images. I would love to hear what you think about the mountain hares in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that way you can keep up to date with all my future wildlife and landscape photography videos. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next one.